Welcome to School to Death and the general reading for the sign of Libra, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of December 2023. I hope you are well. I'm using the um, Crow Tarot for you today. Uh, before we begin, if the reading resonates with you and you'd like to go a little bit deeper, there will be an extended that you can access at the end. That is link number one in the description box. The second link in my, dis in, in my description box, uh, the description box, is to my private community, which is the Order of the Phoenix over on the Circle platform. You can get access to all of the extended content for no extra cost. So you can watch for your moon, you can watch for your ascendant, you can watch for your north node if you want to. Um, or cross watch for someone else if uh, if that's your bag um, and also hang out with an extraordinary group of people and I really don't say that lightly so if that sounds like it's something that might be of interest to you Libra you know what to do with that link now um, the meditation that I did before I started the reading which is what I do that's my process before I start anything uh, was almost overwhelmingly intense for you so um, I know whatever's gonna come up today <clears throat> feels really important I'm going to put it that way so let's get some cards out and see what's going on with you can I have three cards for Libra please thank you goodness right so we have here <clears throat> the Emperor and the Queen of Cups for your recent past let's look at present energy King of Wands lovely and then what's coming towards Libra please for December Right, we've got, am I going to take all of these? Oh, I don't know. Six of Wands, Knight of Pentacles, Queen of Swords. Um, well, you know, if they want to come out, let's do it. So, there we go. There they all are. So, we've got quite a lot of signs appearing here on the table, and I'm going to run through them just briefly, but I do think that it's largely energetic for you, Libra. So, we have Aries here, we have Cancer here, Leo, Leo, Virgo, and Libra. Um, at the bottom of the deck we do have the Five of Cups, I'll find somewhere to put these, so many cards out on the table now, let's put this down here. Now the Shadow card is the underlying theme, right, it's that which underpins the entire reading and it's the Five of Cups for you. Now there's something happening conjunct the South Node in Libra, I forget off the top of my head, sorry, what it is, um, at the end of this month like it's the 28th of November or something like that. Astrologers in the community might be able to uh, just just direct everybody to what that actually is. Um, and as such, I do not feel like this Five of Cups is, is, a, is a wave of grief or a wave of loss or anything like that. It feels like a focusing of the mind and it feels like a very successful focusing of the mind because we have a ton of very positive cards up here. And this it feels more like a processing of something that has gone before. What do we have sitting behind it? Five of Wands. Yeah, I mean, there's. Whenever we have fives, the minor arcana fives showing up in a reading, um, we're always talking about change. We're always talking about instability of some description. And it is the processing, I believe, of. Um, past instabilities, um, situations in the past where you may have focused on the wrong thing, where you may have felt conflicted or even, you know, at war with people or situations or even yourself, you know, I mean, these are all possible Libra. I mean, the South Node is in Libra. It's conjuncting something on the 28th. I'm sorry, I really can't remember what it is. Um, <clears throat> it feels like the opportunity to let a lot of that go. Um, and that cannot be overstated in terms of its importance. <laughs> I, I, I've just shuffled the cards idly while I'm talking to you and where I have stopped is the justice card. Libra, Libra. I mean, there's, there's a coming to self here that is, is really quite profound. We have, um, I'm including this card in the reading because it, it, it feels very relevant to the reading. We have a balancing that is occurring, right? And we're always looking for that balance between the South Node and the wisdom that we have accrued in, in you know, in our past experiences. Like sometimes the South Node is given to actually be a more spiritual position than the North Node um, because it's taking in everything that you've learned, but it's also, you know, releasing an awful lot. It is that balancing process. 
but we have the consequences of one's actions, you know, and I think that we cannot truly come to a state of self without getting to a point where we can take ownership of our past positions, our past behaviours, our past emotions, our past everything. Um, and this all actually feels really positive for me, like a very powerful, very transformative month. Um, to the degree that I feel like you're going into 2024 in a very different way to the way that you arrived in 2023. I mean, this year's been pretty hard on you, Libra. Um, there's been a lot to deal with. I mean, to be fair, every sign has had a lot to deal with. There's been a lot going on, but the South Node transiting Libra was always going to make things quite specifically challenging for you, I think, as it does, you know, there's a wider applicability to it, but, but for Libra, it's pretty full on. So tell me about the Emperor and the Queen of Cups. Why are these here for Libra, please? Thank you. So we have the Eight of Swords and we have the Page of Cups. Let's get one more for that. Oh, we got two. All right, then. We've got the Eight of Pentacles and we've got the Death card. That's tremendous. I love it. I'll move these over here a little bit. This is the only problem when you've got a deck of cards that are quite large and then lots of them come out at once. I'll just try and put it so that you can see everything that's going on. Move these over here. Tell me about this King of Wands, please. Whoa. So there's one. Two, three. Okay, we have the Temperance card. Oh, four. Fucking hell. Right. Mother of Wands, the Fool, and the Knight of Swords. I told you this was an intense month. There was a lot going on. Very powerful. And we have the Six of Wands, Knight of Pentacles, and the Queen of Swords. Son of Cups, which is the Knight of Cups. The Hermit card. Fuck me. The Wheel of Fortune and the Star. Jesus. Right. Okay. Rather interestingly, we have ended up with the same card at the bottom of the deck. Five of Cups really is adding some um, some weight to this idea that there's a lot of processing that is going on this month, um, successful processing. And that which I feel actually is the realignment that's going on this month is it likely will be visible in real time. A, a lot of the times when we're doing our own personal work, you know, there there are there are little things that improve, but there's a there's a there's a process, right? Then and, and that process quite can quite often take some time to work through. You know, we're kind of assimilating what we've what we've learned, what we've understood, the insights that we've got, and then we modify our behaviour in order to better reflect what's going on inside externally you know, three of ones there <coughs> but i feel like it's going to be quite swift for you this month libra um almost doing it on the fly if you will because it does feel like there's a big breakthrough here massive breakthrough and rather than dragging around all of this uncomfortable energy which is sometimes grief sometimes resentment sometimes it can be bitterness it can certainly be a sense that we have you know been struggling for far too long with something it, it's uncomfortable but in that way where you're very very close to the finish line and there's just like a last push to push yourself over it you know where you go beyond that point of exhaustion in any kind of physical activity and you discover that there's just a little bit more energy than you thought there was and you use that to push through and that's kind of the energy of December I think but it is <clears throat> it's accompanied by so many very very obvious um, improvements both internally and externally that I don't feel like you're getting dragged down into a state of feeling victimized or anything like that by what's occurring so there are a lot of cards on the table we're probably going to be here for a while Libra I warn you now um, those were all together now. I'm just making sure that they're all in the right place. Um, and we've even more energy at play underneath here. We've got um, specifically Scorpio, Sagittarius, Aries, 
Aries, Gemini, Pisces, Virgo, Sagittarius and Aquarius and that's quite important there at the end too so excuse the clusterfuck of cards I'll try and make it as clear as I can as I'm going through but the cards have got a lot to say this month <clears throat> and and I think yeah, I think you're somewhat of a sponge for it this month actually so we start over here with these two cards Aries and Cancer the Emperor and the Queen of Cups and and these actually make really quite a nice combination in your recent past because we have um, an innately masculine energy of the Emperor and an innately feminine energy of the Queen of Cups and together the, the you know the, the Emperor provides more order and more structure for the Queen of Cups which is good because she's incredibly receptive and incredibly passive. She is water of water after all. Um, and sometimes where the Queen of Cups arrives, what we're missing is that structure, right? It's just a free flowing emotion or a free flowing love or anything like that. Right? It's kind of ephemeral, but the Emperor gives her structure. There is a direction within which she can apply all of these um, feelings that she has about things. Now, the other thing that the queens do, I think, is make sense of whatever suit it is they represent. So in this case, like the Queen of Cups is making really making sense of how you feel about something. And it might be how you feel about a person, you know, the Emperor would be someone um, with, with a pretty masculine energy and it doesn't have to be a man though. Um, be an Aries generally or could just be somebody who who has the characteristics that you would associate with the Emperor which is you know very powerful very authoritative um, somebody who takes charge somebody who provides order all that kind of thing but we're going to be talking about this in terms of energetic stuff first and I do feel like it applies to you rather than necessarily a relationship that you have with other people so the Emperor um, provides the structure for the Queen of Cups, but the Queen of Cups takes off the sharp edges of the Emperor because he is powerful and he does represent structure. But when we have too much of that, what we get is restriction. We get things that are very, very rigid. We have um, yeah, um, control issues sometimes, right? So the pairing of them together creates a much softer sense of getting your shit together because the Emperor is very much a card of that for me um, but doing it in such a way that the emotions are involved and it's stopping us from becoming rigid it's stopping us from you know uh, from projecting our control issues out into the world all those sorts of things it's it's a nice even place to be starting and I think because so much of what Libra is going through at the moment is about trying to take control take authority for themselves right the differentiation between Aries and Libra which is North Node and South Node currently uh, respectively is the moving into more of a state of I am than we are and these two cards speak to doing that very very well because the Emperor is the I am right I am I will I do all these things right I'm in charge I'm I'm the authority I am the sovereign here and I make decisions about what I'm going to do rather than subjugating your will to that of the collective which is the shadow side of Libra often but the Queen of Co Cups stops it from being something that is dictatorial or you know totalitarian or anything like that it's a really nice combination and we have this eight of swords here showing up sideways and I know some people don't like that but within the tarot cards have meanings this way around and they also have meanings when they're reversed and sometimes the reverse is you know an absolute opposite to what it means in the upright but otherwise it can talk about blocks and delays and all that sort of stuff for me the when a card chooses to show up sideways like that it's because something is in the process of changing it is neither one way or entirely the other but it's changing right it hasn't quite settled into committing which way round it is. Now you could see this as you know this moving into this and this does represent mental restriction so that would not be a good way round to go you know you know kind of coming out of mental restriction but we're going into mental restriction when it's that way around or it could be vice versa. The way that it's appearing with you is I think that it is indicating that you are on the precipice of change right there is something about the way that you think that is changing 
rapidly um, and it's not yet quite complete and that's the important thing because the process that you seem to be going through um, you know right the way up until the end of the year seems to be that shift <clears throat> it's an emotional shift it's a mental shift um, I mean in all likelihood some of the biggest work may have been done already well that that's true actually Libra because you have been working on yourself as all the signs have been for the last few years um, I don't think uh, I don't think that there are many people whose eyes are open in, in, in the way that is important that have not noticed that we are in somewhat of a paradigm shift there is we're, we're moving from an old way of being to a new right and Pluto's moving into Aquarius in January I think it's the 21st of January and so this is this is a new dawn like it's not going to stay in Aquarius I think it bobs out in September for just to go over the last degree of Capricorn before settling down in November I think those dates are right um, but wherever Pluto's involved there is tremendous change so we've got the page of cups here and I like this because the Page of Cups usually talks about a new direction, right? emotionally going in a new direction. Pages take something that you already have and they redirect it or they sculpt it in some sort of way so that it is different to what it was before. But it's the starting point in a journey. That's how I see the, the pages. But what is really striking me about this particular Page of Cups is the ugly duckling quality to it. Um, You all know the story of the ugly duckling, right? What we have here is a signet who is perceiving the light that exists within them, right? The, this shift in your mental processes that we're seeing here with the Eight of Swords showing up sideways is directly related to the way that you see yourself, Libra. And Taking into account what I was talking about before, about the, the Libra, the shadow side of Libra being the, the we are and we must do whatever we can in our power just to keep everything straight and level and all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> we can see how approaching the topic of you differently would be somewhat of a revelatory moment where you can emotionally look at yourself and say, well, yes, I have made mistakes. I've made a ton of mistakes. I've done this, I've done that, I've done the other. I mean, yeah, I've had some really bad feelings about myself, but actually those are not a true reflection of who I am. And particularly not when you take into account how I am shifting, how I am morphing, how I am evolving. Right? And leaning into more of that kind of compassionate spirit for you as an individual. Right? Realising that there's more to you than just the oil on troubled waters, right? The, the, the point of... Um, You know, putting everybody else's needs first. There's more to you than that. You, you have a validity that exists purely by virtue of the fact that you exist rather than what it is that you do or you provide within the family unit or the friendship unit or even in work and stuff like that, right? <clears throat> because the eights are all about power, actually, and empowerment. And there is a there is a rather spectacular powering up of you as an individual that is going on here. Now, this might be by way of the experiences that you're having right now, but it is certainly directly related to the kind of work that you've been doing on yourself of late. And perhaps that extrication of self from the unit of you and others, right? <sighs> the Eight of Pentacles is about mastery. It's about really grinding away at something until you get so good at it that it is then second nature. It is instinctive, just as it is for the spider to create its web. There's no thought that has to go into it. It's just a very ex authentic expression of who you are. But there's so much has had to go into the recognition of that. I think... Often when we talk about like knowing who we are and stuff like that, I, I, most people walk around with a with an intellectual appreciation of a fairly abstract concept 
and we, we don't see it that way. Well, of course I know who I am. I get up in the morning, I do this thing, I do the other. Sorry, Silas is in the background over there, stretching. Um, we start to look at ways to define ourselves through what we do, the way that we occupy our time, how we earn our money, you know, the kind of hobbies we have and all that sort of stuff. The role, in fact, maybe is that we play within any given dynamic. But there is a you that exists beyond all of the ways in which you seek to define yourself. And I think that you're starting to understand that there is something considerably more substantial. And I mean of substance, not just bigger. There's something substantially that is you that hasn't really been getting much of a an airing over the course of your life so far and it's that it's the recognition of that point there and the leaning into of that point there that is giving more and more fuel to this transformation that you are undergoing like i said it's very much um fuck me Words are disappearing today. It's very much in process right now. That's not what I was wanting to say, but it's the right sort of area, right? It's in motion, it's fluid, it's not finished yet. Um, there's there's more to find out about self and there's more to lean into here. And, and in some ways, leaning into that is uncomfortable because it is so very new, it's so very novel. And yet, the way that you have been and the way that things have been, the way that your relationships have been, the way that you know, all aspects of your life have been, are starting to feel somewhat humdrum in terms of where you could go, where you could be. It, it, it seems almost like a flame has been ignited within you, Libra, right? We've got, I have to shift these cards around a little bit, right? We've got the King of Wands in your present energy. It is Leo, but it speaks specifically to the actions that one takes. Uh, along with the Queen of Wands, who you also have here, they represent the uh, the top of the hierarchy of the suits of wands. Now, remember what I said about the Queen of Cups and how the Queens, for me, represent um, a, a making sense of whatever suit they represent. So we don't just have the taking of action, we have a deep understanding of why those actions are taken, why we behave a certain way, right? And if you've been doing shadow work or anything like that recently, you could have had a whole slew of revelations about people pleasing or the need not to rock the boat, any of these sorts of things, right? Um, but also a deep understanding of why it is necessary to change those things. Now we have the Temperance card there, Sagittarius, like I said, another card that represents balance and equilibrium like we saw in the Justice card before. But it's it's quite an active process, I think, when we see it in the Temperance card. I mean, there's, it's not static exactly when we see it with the, uh, with the Justice card, but there's a sense of it being where it is. With the Temperance card, it is a dynamic process of achieving the balance through specifically the act of healing and i think that you are drawing bits of yourself in that you have long since kicked away from you and that's like actually that is me that is something that i do it's something that i've always done this is something that that that, that, that is inherently me at the core why have i disavowed it for such a long time and perhaps more importantly, why have i replaced it with a need to make sure that everybody else is over over invested in to fuck possibly you know you've got a very very strong combination here between the king and the queen of wands are speaking to an absolute shift in the way that you show up in the world the things that you do being a reflection of the changes the emotional and the mental changes that are going on inside of you and it could be that you are thinking about things in a very fire element kind of way at the moment it's just like oh <clears throat> Maybe some of you are wondering about what it is that you can burn down. Um, <clears throat> careful, 
don't get too enthusiastic, right? Aries will have you, and we've got two Aries cards here, um, chopping and burning and slicing and, and, and literally setting fire to all sorts of things like that. North Node Drive to exper experience the new and expand no matter what. When combined with Aries, which is all about initiation and um, self-belief and faith and all that kind of thing, it can make us sometimes overdo that energy. So again, temperance card is kind of like, do you need to burn all of your bridges or do you just need to um, <sighs> reassess the rules of engagement in so much as the way that you choose to engage with the rest of the world in your closest relationships, in your relationships that are not so close to you. That would be a huge thing. But I do think that the, the emphasis here is on actually getting out there and doing new things. Because the, this kind of humdrum energy to the way that you've lived up until this point. Now, I'm not saying that you've had a boring life, but there's something that you recognise about how the last few years have been that is showing you that the spark that makes you Libra personally feel like you are alive and you are engaging with the world has, if not been entirely snuffed out, certainly seems to have been just at a smolder rather than something much bigger. And it's this spark that is returning. You know what I mean? Fuck me. These are all fire element cards here. Leo, Sag, Aries, Aries. You've got the whole trifecta of of, um, of fire element cards in your here and now and and what the fire element does better than any other sign is the here and the now it's about taking opportunities it's about expansion it's about getting out there and experiencing and the interesting thing is you've got the complementary element of air stepping in to also assist with this this is a Gemini card here and the knight of uh, swords son of swords as it is here is primarily concerned with the transmission of information that's that's the best way to put it right so whether this is words going from your brain to somebody else's brain and vice versa so it's not just the way that you communicate it's the way that you hear which is another aspect of communication that doesn't really get spoken about too much but it can speak to the way that you actively articulate your feelings, articulate your desires, which are very wand energy kind of stuff, right? Um, but it can also speak to the way that you are connecting with bits of you, because I mean, this can be, you know, parts of your brain talking to each other. It seems to me, Libra, that there's a there's a, a an enormous reprogramming going on here around emotions and around the way that you think. Knife swords can be very much the way that you think and how the way that you think is resulting in a different set of behaviors in the here and now. You might be suddenly deciding that you need to go traveling or something like that, but it's like wherever fire's concerned, there's always expansion. You gotta be careful that it doesn't turn into consumption though, like I said, just burning everything down. <clears throat> You know, this endless pursuit for the novel sometimes can be um, just as destructive as keeping ourselves very, very contracted down. But it feels like the rebirth. You know, the, the, there's a... <sighs> one of the most liberating things I think that can happen, as well as one of the most, you know, emotionally excoriating things that can happen, is to realise the extent to which you have stopped yourself from experiencing life to its fullest extent you know whether you've not gone for that opportunity or whether you've you know failed to assert yourself in a particular situation where you have perhaps pandered to a narcissist you know these kind of behaviors like when it hits you that the whole time the power was in your hand to be able to do something differently it is simultaneously like having the your knees taken out from beneath you because you're like, fuck, changes everything. But at the same time, it is that liberating force that you need because the only person who can hold you back is you. And I say that all the time. And it's one of those things, like uh, for years, I used to hear people say, oh, let it go, 
let it go. And I'll be like, oh, fuck you. Fuck you. You have absolutely no fucking idea what you are talking about. Because I did not perceive the profundity within the simplicity. No, it's as simple as that. Like, I could not hear it. And in the same way, the you are the only person who can hold you back is, it is incredibly true. But we cover it with loads of other shit over the top because it just seems too fucking simple, right? To a lot of us, it sounds like it's too easy. And there's no implication anywhere in that that it is easy, but it is exceedingly simple. And I think this is what has been cracking for you, Libra. Now we've got, like I said, double five of cups at the bottom of the deck there. Now that's Scorpio energy, it's Lord of Disappointment. And there could be all sorts of things that are coming up with this. Uh, Overinvestment is coming up a lot. I'm, I'm hearing it being chanted at me. Overinvestment in people, underinvestment in you is a huge aspect of what you've been dealing with. But, you know, for others of you, there may well be unresolved grief, um, you know, unresolved trauma that's actually been knocking around in your subconscious for the longest time. But because it's been below the level of the radar, you have never really seen it for what it is. It's interesting. I ended up writing something this weekend, kind of revisiting. <clears throat> um, my my teenage year, a six month period in my teenage years, and when it was the first time I'd ever actually just fucking written it down on paper, and I looked at it and I was like, "Whoa, you must have been so much more fucked up than you thought you were." Like Jesus, how can anybody experience that in a six month period and then come out the other side of it like sorted? I was absolutely convinced I was fine. Um, <clears throat> No. Um, oh, fuck me, I'm 43. I mean, we're talking about events that happened nearly 30 years ago. And I see now how some of that stuff is still kind of playing away around there in, in the back of my head. Now, I could get annoyed with myself. You could get annoyed with yourself. But actually, it's the liberation of the moment that seems to be the most important thing here, right? When we realise where we've been grieving over something that has lost and quite likely trying subconsciously to replace what it is that we have lost for the longest time rather than turning around and looking at it properly it leaves us in somewhat of a static state it's like no movement can happen it doesn't matter how much consciously we try and pull against it the subconscious has just rooted itself to this thing and it's not fucking going anywhere so all of this here seems to be drawing this up to the surface. Oh, well, I, you know, drawing infection out of a wound, you know? It's not a pleasant process, but at the same time, you're looking at it and you're like, oh, I'm feeling better and I'm gonna let that stuff go because I don't need to carry it around. A lot of us don't even realize that we're carrying it around, most of us, I think, because most people don't ever turn the light of their consciousness onto what is going on, subrosa. Um, you have, you are, and you are going to, in very swift order, you should be feeling the benefit of this. I think that you're probably feeling it already. If anything, I would say that this month is about an escalation, an increase in momentum in terms of what it is that you are discovering about yourself and the corresponding level of freedom that is coming from these insights. So you're like, ooh, yay, ooh, yay. And it's like, it's just climbing and climbing and climbing you know so when we get into december i mean this is just wonderful we've got the six of wands we've got the knight of pentacles and the queen of swords and what this says really clearly to me in december is that you have worked out the route forwards i mean this summer was pretty fucking gross in a lot of ways because we had oh, 1.7 planets all in retrograde and we know there's no forward motion when the planets are retrograde. It is about stopping. It is about looking back. It's about going back over everything again and making sure that we've done it correctly. And the interesting thing that I've noticed about the the retrograde period that happened, you know, end of the summer, was how much all of the sense seemed to come once the retrograde season had finished. I mean, we've still got several planets. I think Uranus is still in retrograde, and I believe Jupiter is still in retrograde till the end of the year, like the 31st or something. But everything else is going forwards, including Saturn, which is stationed direct on 
4th of November, Pluto, 10th of October, something like that. You know, all of these big ass planets are, are all stationing direct now and they're all moving forwards. Things are happening. The sense is being made of the stasis that we were in in the summer. And it's very difficult to know which way is, is the right way forwards when you're stuck in that energy and you know i can't go anyway i've got to go back i've got to go within i've got to do all of these things it's becoming clear to you now and the necessary precondition for the clarity coming is the realization of how hard you have kept yourself in one place and as those anchors are like just pinging off it's just like um you know ropes under tension and there's ping 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 which is how it feels like it's happening for you at the moment <clears throat> it's like whatever great big awning that you've been sat under for the longest time is is blown out of the way by the wind and you're like there's my path forwards that's my route to success that's my route to victory and it's I would go as far as to say that it's not actually an end destination for you, Libra. It is a realization that the six of wands and everything that it represents, which is, you know, victory and success and all those kind of things, is actually a companion with you in the present. It's like a lot of the ways that we make ourselves suffer is by by living never living in the moment kind of looking off in the future and going and i've been very guilty of this myself oh it'll all just be better when i'm over there <clears throat> right I mean, wherever it is that i'm heading once i get there everything will be fine and you know i'll have no problems and it will be sunshine and rainbows and unicorns and i'll live ha happily ever after and what actually happens is you grind your way there and you've got a whole heap of different problems you know the, the ones that you were dealing with before have melted away but you have something new in its stead <coughs> And it's this constant um, uh, conveyor belt that you seem to be running against. And it's like you never really get anywhere because the biggest issues are the ones that are in here. And these are the ones that you take with you. You know, it's like, like Cam White says, wherever you go, there you are. I fucking love that. I actually wrote it in front of my diary in really, really big letters. Because it's so very fucking true, you know, landscapes may change, the relationships may change and all that kind of thing. But the thing that is consistent, that remains consistent through it is you. Now, if you are not putting in the work to you, wherever you go, there you are. Whatever discomforts and things that you don't enjoy in the here, now, you're going to find them over there and over there and over there and over there. Whereas... If you recognize that there is a success in the fact that you exist at all, you are valid, you are worthy, and you need to be putting yourself first. It's like the six of wands, just like the spark that ignites the flame, right? It's just suddenly there where it wasn't there before. The Knight of Pentacles is about discipline and commitment, and but, but more importantly, putting one foot in front of the other. And then we've got the Queen of Swords, and there's something so very fucking beautiful beautiful about these three cards here together, because it's the realisation that coming to you, coming to yourself, is the most important thing that it is. It doesn't actually matter what is going on outside of you. It's that consistency, that balance, that equilibrium that so desperately evades Libras sometimes, you know? You, you, Libra is associated with balance and people just assume that that means that they're just going to be balanced all the time and there's a bit of that trope about you know Libras not being able to make up their mind about stuff and whatnot um, but in my experience actually for Libra <laughs> their lives are actually often characterized by an extreme lack of balance and it's the desperate search for that why well, it doesn't have to be desperate it is the search for that that represents the maturity and the evolution of a person working within the libra archetype right and the fact is that this is something that is going on with everyone at the moment actually but you are like the purest manifestation of it because you are a libra the knight of pentacles says you found the middle road and one foot goes in front of the other and in front of the other and in front of the other because you are headed to yourself it is in fact the only victory that really fucking means anything 
what you do as a job, you know, whatever, how much money you've got in the bank, all these kind of things, right? They're distracting things that we use in this 3D, you know, representation of ourselves as markers of status and success and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately they are empty if the soul that is experiencing them is having to almost like yoke itself to the 3D. This is, this is not what we're here to do. We're here to break out beyond it. <clears throat> we're here to grow. We're here to learn. There's a clarity that's hitting you this month, Libra. And it's a clarity all of your own. It's what you've been looking for for a very long time and it's here. And it's all coming about because maybe you are burning some bridges, but you're certainly looking for what is authentic, what is real, what is you. And trying to, successfully I would say, pull yourself away from that which isn't real or that which only exists in the past. It's about the here and now for you. And look at what we've got underneath here. We've got the Knight of Cups. We've got the Hermit card. We've got the Wheel of Fortune. And we have got the Star. Now, that is profound. Because we have this Pisces energy here of the Knight of Cups, right? Maybe it represents Saturn. But what it certainly represents is the way that you give your emotion out into the world whether or not you do it in a healthy way or whether you do it in an over investing kind of way right it speaks to a clarification right like almost like a mm, purification is probably the better word of the emotional energy that you put out into the world maybe a huge part of this is because you are taking responsibility for that which is yours and that's not an easy thing to do right it represents incredible growth whenever that occurs but it's right here, right? And Saturn's moving forward, Saturn's the planet of karma and all that kind of thing, right? So we've got huge aspects of that here. But what becomes more important is the fact that the hermit is next to it. And it's a reflection of everything that I was just talking about. It's like the, the true recipient of the emotion, first and foremost, must be you. Compassion, empathy, understanding. All of the things that you have not allowed yourself to experience, and maybe it is because you've been sat in massive fucking judgment of yourself for the longest time. I mean, that's possible. It's saying, you know, the direct route to your personal success is going within and applying this energy to what you find in there. That's it. That's, that's really it. Everything else flows holistically. Where the work has always needed to be was here, not out there and you've got the wheel of fortune now the wheel of fortune does speak to fortunes improving i mean sometimes it can talk to to, to fortunes you know f fucking going off a cliff but in my experience when the wheel of fortune shows up it, it is usually talking to something that is improving the thing that used to really well it ragged me for a while when i sat and thought about it furiously it was like why and the answer was in the Waite Smith. I spent ages staring at it. And it was the fact that the Wheel of Fortune and the World Card, certainly in the Waite Smith, um, are very, very similar. There's not very much between the two cards, actually, to differentiate them. In so much as we have the four fixed signs sitting in the corner. And obviously in the Wheel of Fortune, you've got a wheel in the centre. But in the World card, you've got, you know, you've got an oval shape that is made of a laurel wreath. And there's a woman dancing naked, as we all like to do within the laurel wreath. Um, and I was like, why? Why are they different? Why are they the same? But why are they different? And um, oh, fucking, if it's going to be the last fucking card in the deck, yeah, more or less. There we go. <clears throat> What changed between the two things? This is what, what I want you to look at and what I want you to have a think about there. So there are the two cards. And we see the four fixed signs in the corner. So we've got you know, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio and Leo all there. And the answer, I see this, was in the books that all of these characters 
All of these fixed signs have in the Wheel of Fortune. This is graduation. This is the learning that happens. Right? It's the midway point in the cycle of the Major Arcana. Something really important is being learned at this point. And, and I've often associated the, the Wheel of Fortune with almost like a save point in a game, right? Uh, you struggle to get to a certain point and you haven't finished, but you've reached a point. And from that point on, it doesn't matter what happens in the future, you, you, what you will come back to is this save point right here, what it is that you know, what it is that you understand. You will never have to go back to the beginning again. That's what the Wheel of Fortune is saying. Because you learned something, a lesson, that was very important for you to know, and we've got it here, that the route to success was always inwards, <clears throat> we get the star. We get a levelling up going on. Now the star, like the Temperance card, can speak to um, deep, intense healing. I would say, actually, in the case of, of the star card, it is more about that deep cleansing of self, right? It's a purge, it's a release, it's a, it's a washing yourself clean. Whereas the Temperance card seems to be more about kind of drawing things up into balance so that you can look at them properly. Like I said, a little bit more dynamic. Um, depiction of it uh, but the other thing that the star talks about and why this is so very fucking important well there are two things actually is that the star is um, ruled by Aquarius as we know um, and Aquarius is the sign that Pluto is literally just about to move into I mean we're, we're down to weeks now before this happens and this is this is going to be big for everyone um, no shadow of a doubt, but it also represents the future, right? So you have got a cleaned, clear platform upon which you can now start thinking about your your future in, in a really tangible way. I mean, everybody's, every, everybody's mind tends to turn to, you know, the wrapping up of the end of the year once we get into December and, and you know, what's going to happen in January. And there's always the new year, new me kind of posts and you always know that those people are never gonna, they're never gonna stick to it. Because if you wanna stick to it, actually, you've started that already. You know, you don't use the arbitrary 1st of, of January to do a thing. It's like gym memberships and stuff like that. Anybody who signs up in the first two weeks of January will be gone by the end of February. It's just a fact, right? And that's, that's anecdotal, I've seen it. Um, I think it's also reflected in the stats if you look in the, uh, into the industry. Um, <clears throat> The other thing that I think is most specifically to you, Libra, important about the star card is that it represents connection. Well, it only really represents connection to me, but I think that this is really important because it speaks to a cleansing of the connections that you have. And, and because so much of what you've been doing has been about extricating yourself from the masses, from the homogenous blob of people and relationships and all that kind of thing and, and trying to find yourself within the center of it that seems to me to be incredibly fucking profound because it means that the relationships that are important to you you are showing up in a different way for and there's a different standard that you're applying both to and there's crows like doing some acrobatics outside the house there um both to the way that you are showing up in relationships and the standard that you hold yourself to, but also then correspondingly what you hold others to, too. And all of these things come together to speak to an absolute revolution in the way that you are experiencing you, your life, your relationships, your work, everything. Like I said, it's natural for people to be looking, looking to wrap up the year <clears throat> once you get into December and get excited and hopeful about what the future may hold, you know, in the following year. But there's actual groundwork gone into this for you. This isn't a 1st of January, New Year, New Me kind of deal. This is like, nah, this is where I am. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. I mean, it's like, 
it's like you're pulling all of the straps off yourself, all of the way in which you, you, you literally ratchet strap to yourself to an old situation, an old way of being, old conflicts, old internal conflicts. It, the straps are coming off, Libra, and you're ready to move into the new year. It's a very different version of you than you have known probably about yourself forever. And it's exciting. Like I said, there are going to be moments where you feel a little bit like at the back of your throat, you are bile rising a little bit when you, you have these certain realisations. But because there is the ability that you've developed to be able to put them into the right place and look at them sympathetically, compassionately, empathetically. They're not representing concrete boots on you anymore. This is growth, Libra. This is, this is evolution. This is you kind of lighting the way for everybody else to follow when it comes to the process of the balancing of the South Node. Which means you're a fucking inspiration, Libra, whether you realise it or not. And that might mean something very different to you nowadays than it might have meant to you even six months ago, certainly a year ago. Which is just brilliant. It's really, really good. I'm going to go over to the extended now. We're going to look at December specifically. Um, <clears throat> pull up a little bit more detail and uh, see, see what you need to know to navigate the month successfully. So if you would like to join me, um, you can do so on Circle. You can do so on Vimeo. Links for both are in the description box. Um, but if this is where we part ways, I mean, Libra, this is tremendous. It's, it really is tremendous work. And I do want you to, to know that the rest of the Zodiac, if they're doing their work, they're going to be following your lead on this one. And what a fucking good example you are setting. This is wonderful. All right. I'll leave it there. Know that I love you all very, very much. I'm not set fire to myself. I'll see you soon.